There are 30 teams in Major League Baseball. 29 of them took a pass on Sanders. Not Bowden. Maybe the Ron Oster thing blew up on him. Maybe he should have given Tony Perez more than 44 games. But this Dion thing has been a home run, literally. Here he is, first Major League pitch Dion Sanders has ever faced, well, at least in the last four years. And he wraps this out for a single. One pitch, one hit, and more of what Sanders was doing in the minors, where he hit 449, 459 in that all bus leg. Next trip to the plate, the second big league pitch he's faced since 97. And you can kiss it goodbye. Deep to right field. Two men on. Three run shot. Two pitches. Two hits. One home run. Three RBI. Most guys could have called it a night right there. Not prime time. His third trip to the plate. Bottom five. The fourth pitch he's faced since 97. Drag bunt. Blazing speed. Three for three on four pitches. Three for three. After this, he swiped, stole a base. Led the Reds to a 6-1 lead. Osvaldo Fernandez was cruising until the sixth. Let's a couple of guys on, and then Eric Caros gets the Dodgers back in it. Two RBI single. They'd cut that Reds lead to 6-3. But then things really got rotten. Ten, top seven. Two out, one on. Mark Wolders pitching. He could have ended the threat, but he bobbles the little comebacker. All hands safe. And then on a 1-2 pitch, this is the real killer. Pop-up. Jason LaRue calls for it. But he loses it in the twilight. Nobody around to help. Disaster. The Reds gave two outs back to the Dodgers, and they paid for it. This is Dave Hansen, and this is what ties the game. The shot into the corner in right field. Both runners scoot home. 6-6 ball game. Walters blew the save, but he gets the win. And he can thank Dion for that. Top seven. Barry on first. Should say the bottom of the seventh. He was one for three. Here's the final part in that Dion puzzle tonight. The perfect sacrifice bunt. Larkin goes to second. Didn't have to stand there very long. Here is the game-winning hit. Dimitri Young brings him home, and that's it. 7-6 is the final. The Reds beat the Dodgers. The Cubs got crushed tonight. So the Reds on the back of Dion now tied for first in the Central Division. And I'm going to have fun, good or bad. I'm going to have fun playing this game because I made a commitment to myself to come back to this game. I made that commitment. So I'm going to have fun doing this thing, good or bad. I'm, I'm going I'm to make this thing work. It's going to work. I will be successful and I will help the Reds win games. I think the fact that he's here and uh, he's aggressive is going to be contagious and not only offensively uh, with the bat but also defensively and on the base pass. So. The highlights and the Dion warming up first pitch he sees he laces a single in the center field that came in the first. Dion Sanders second pitch he sees with two on ding dong pitch dead Darryl, how does he get his hands up that quickly on that pick absolutely just lightning through the zone you know he's really worked on his swing a lot and, and he's stronger than most people think too and not pull the ball foul kept it fair this is where things went awry uh, not an error ruled the hit rollers is in earlier in the inning he had an error and in a 6-3 game, guess what? All runs unearned, but that would clear the bases. 6-6. Dion's night, perhaps, getting ruined. Hey, at the plate, barely. It's 6-6. What do it is again? Prime time. Third at bat. He laid down a punt. He beat it out. The meat hook. The sack fly, sacrifice bunt to move it over, set up this run right here by Dimitri driving in Larkin. Seven six Reds. Dion three for three at that point. All right, you see right there, Larkin having fun with him at the end of the game. There's a different attitude about the Cincinnati Reds, and you saw it immediately with Sanders' presence. Two runs, three RBIs. Aaron Boone. Three for four, his fourth home run. Two more runs batted in. When you look at that team, when you've got <laughs> prime time, Junior, Pokey Reese, Barry Larkin on a $45 million payroll. That's about as much entertainment dollar as you can get. Reds have scored at least seven runs in seven straight games. Dion also says, don't look for home runs. That's, uh, that's not part of my game. That's not what I am about. What is he about? You got to understand uh, how moved I was. I mean, Terry moved <laughs> because for one, I've never received the ovation in this game, or I don't feel like any game. And I think the fans realize a love and a joy and a peace that I have in this city. And just to show me that there was love, that's the first time I think in sports that I really felt appreciated for once. 
Well, rather remarkable to hear that from a guy who has uh, faced as many applause loud as, uh, as any other athlete in the history of any sport, including the fact that he plays two sports. His first home run since August of 1997. You get a sense for what he meant just by hearing what he said based on the fans' reaction and also what Barry Larkin did when uh, the game was over, what he brings to the table. Harold, why don't you expand on that? Well, we've been talking about it for a couple of days, the delightful person that Dion is. I remember a few years ago when I went to Cincinnati to cover him when he was there, he rode a bicycle to the ballpark. I mean, this is a guy making millions of dollars. He's on all kinds of commercials. He is a great guy to be around. But I think the main thing about baseball, he can play the game. He's going to bring tremendous speed, and speed does not go into a slump for very long. He can bunt, he can hit and run. He saw him move a man over tonight to put the winning run in scoring position, and he hit the home run. He's not going to provide a whole lot of power, but the energy and excitement, I think the biggest thing that Peter Gammons has been talking about, he's going to take so much pressure off of Ken Griffey Jr. You know, everybody wants a star. They want everybody to talk in the locker room. That's not Jr.'s personality. Dion is that type of guy that loves to talk, and he will take a lot of attention and do that. Yeah, and as much as he says after the game and you see the smiles, I mean, the bottom line is this guy is an athlete. He's a baseball player. When he goes to the field, he's just like everybody else. And you got the sense he fit right in on this team. Center field tonight, he has Pokey Reese's back, but who has Dion's back? That was an initial problem. Pete Harnish on the mound, the first pitch of the ball game, and Marquise Grissom lays into it. Deep to center field, one pitch, one run, one zip Los Angeles. Two outs later, Sean Green's on second after a double. Here's Eric Karros, and that ball? That ball is way out of here. Karros with his fifth of the year, and Harnish was in a sinkhole the size of Toledo. Top two, it's the pitcher, Kevin Brown. This guy hits about as often as I do at pick three. But Brown picked this and put it over the wall for yet another home run. It was four zip Los Angeles. Bottom three, the Reds awaken. Michael Tucker rips it down the line and right. It gets Harnish home from third. The shutout avoided. It's 189 straight and counting. Then Dimitri Young goes the other way. Same result, RBI, and the Reds had cut the Dodgers' lead in half. But in the fourth, Brown is on again after an Aaron Boone era. Here's Grissom again. And the construction workers will find this tomorrow morning. Marquise Grissom, two blasts tonight. It made it 6-2 Los Angeles. In the sixth, Dimitri Young tried to breathe some life into the troops. This got the guys on the barge with the fireworks up from their nap. 6-3 ball game at this point. Ah, but Grissom would have one more trick up his sleeve. Watch him go up against the wall and fleece Young. Harnish goes five. Five of his six runs were earned. And Dion tonight, 0 for 4. Falling behind early against Kevin Brown. It was a killer. Puts us down, I think, 6-1, six, 6-2, six six something like that, which uh, at that point, once it starts getting late in the game and you're not really uh, getting guys in scoring position and getting the opportunities, it's... Uh, well, Coach Melanie Balcom throwing out the first pitch tonight, then potential disaster. Barry Larkin slides into second of the first, pulled groin, pulled from the game day to day. Next inning, Aaron Boone. Hit by Luke Prokopek on the left wrist. X-rays luckily negative, no fracture. Third inning, two on. First base open, but Reitzma pitches to Gary Sheffield. Cost him two runs single to open the scoring. The Dodgers go up 6-1. to one. Bottom of six, Sean Casey against Prokopek, the double. First hit for the Reds. Brings home meat. Deficit cut to four. Dodgers add two more before Casey strikes again. Bloop to left. Scores two. 8-5. Alex Ochoa following with a liner to center field. Casey coming in. 8-6. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth. We kind of lost the drama there. Bases loaded one out. Sean gets Rivera swinging. Sadler next. Swinging. The Reds lose. Leave three guys on base. Lose rubber game. 8-6 to six your final. You know, maybe I'm not being as, as aggressive with my fastball as I used to. I'm not too sure, but, uh, well, you know, it's a long season. Like I said, uh, when you guys came to me early and everything was going well, I said, hey, there's going to be times like this, you know. And so uh, we continue to learn and uh, just uh, keep on improving. Getting bit by the injury.